I'm Katie. I'm Garrett. Um, I actually have a whole little intro. Plan. Do we have housekeeping? Um, I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so either. All the this, cats are all, uh, are out of all of the bags. That's true. There are very few hidden cat bags anymore. Uh, <laughs> Uh, if you want to join our Patreon, you can do that at patreon.com slash the bar is ankle high. Which you should. We. I love our dysfunction <laughs> episodes. Like if you They're want so to know more about us, that's the way to go. <laughs> when we don't have an agenda. Um, yeah. we also have a tendency to start with one thing. And I mean, we, you know, we go off topic, whatever it happens, ADHD, or whatever. We went on... Off the rails on a gravy train. Yeah, it was a gravy train <laughs> and it was a real deep dive into something that was just like a like a flicker in the internet lifetime, but man, were we invested in it. So, so invested. If you want to hear some internet drama with strangers, um, it's worth it. Tune in. Sign up. Yeah. Sign yeah. It was um, like a love polygon yes yeah a fake love polygon this is weird with a lot of emojis oh, so many a emojis. lot of pet names and our nicknames for people so it's just you can't beat it no um also let me just check the calendar real quick for a second i was like why are you grabbing that empty bottle <laughs> what does that have to do with anything uh i'm gonna play an instrument I mean, <laughs> I don't put it past you, to be honest. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so this comes out in the middle end of April. Okay, um, spring. April 20th. Yeah, your favorite holiday. Not anymore. Well, not this year, Can't anyway. celebrate. <laughs> Can't celebrate the way I'd like to. Mm, that's okay. Enjoy your 420, guys, because I can't. Yeah, puff puff. Oh, honestly, puff puff pass. What a fitting day for this to come out on so um what yeah are you talking about today katie uh, we don't really have any other housekeeping items um bit.ly slash ankle high merch if you want to check out our merch it's available Put us on your bodies it's available internationally um and yeah just follow us on instagram at the bar is ankle high because i have fun there mm, mm -hmm. um and then i see the comments uh two weeks later and i respond <laughs> I'm bad at that. <laughs> Which is why I don't run the social media. Yes. Why Katie runs it. Because <laughs> I won't see it for two weeks. So if you already follow us on social media, you saw that I had asked our Instagram followers what sort of like fad thing had they ever participated in before. Mm -hmm. um, so one of our followers responded to that. Um, and... Uh, and again, like, make sure you're watching our stories. It's a good way to, like, if you have a topic that you're interested in, like, those questions that I post are, like, a great way to get your topic covered or something that you see in the media or something. Mm -hmm. um, sending it to our Instagram, sending it to our email is also great, too. But um, when we kind of request those things on Instagram, it's, like, a great way to... Um, I don't know, get involved in our episodes, I guess. Yeah. So, because I have a story from the person who suggested Ooh. this topic later. I'm so excited. So. Also, I swore I wouldn't look anything up. I wouldn't read anything. I even got an email from Katie in all caps and I didn't open it. Right. Because it As said, instructed. Don't open. <laughs> yes. I followed instructions. <laughs> So, as I said, this was suggested because I had asked, like, what fad trend you've followed in the past. Like, I've tried P90X and keto. I haven't done CrossFit, but I was really big into Orange Theory mm -hmm. um, back in the day. And, like, you won't hear it for a while, but um, – at least until Garrett has her baby. But we recorded our first mama-sode for when she's on maternity leave, and that – was a deep dive based on a TikTok that I was sent about, um, like an ADHD quote unquote cure. So Oof, yeah, we raged. <laughs> that made us both real mad. So it seemed like this would be something worth covering before that episode comes out. Yeah. Yeah. So we are talking about essential oils today. Uh -huh. So and how they cure COVID. 
<laughs> no, I'm kidding. I've got stories. <laughs> so essential oil is a concentrated hydrophobic, i.e. afraid of water or water avoidant, liquid containing volatile chemical compounds from plants. In this context, volatile means it's easily evaporated at normal temperatures. Mm. So essential oils, also known as volatile oils, ethereal oils, ethereolium, or just oil of the plant from which they were extracted, like oil of clove. Mm -hmm. They're also called essential because it contains the essence of the plant. Oh. Yeah. Not, it does not mean that it's indispensable to human survival. Right. Um, or usable necessarily by the human body. The way we say, like, essential amino acids are It's just essence of. Correct. Never occurred to me. I know. Yeah. Which kind of leads into, like, how they can be misused because those words are, they mean two totally different things. Right. Like, essence of clove or essence of bergamot versus essential bergamot. Like, if you needed, like... I don't know, like vitamin K or something. Right. Yeah. Um, so it is just plant extract, but it's specifically the part of the plant that smells like something. Right. And you need like hundreds of pounds of a plant to get just a few, like that little, like. Bit of extract. Yeah. 15 milliliter bottle, which is mm-hmm. 0.5 ounces. Mm-hmm. It's a teeny tiny bottle if you haven't seen these in person. That's why they have those little itty bitty dropper things on the top right because you're supposed to use them in that kind of quantity yes i also feel like the size of what something when you purchase something the size it comes in gives you an indication of like how it gets used yes like they should only be used sparingly as opposed to depending dumping them in things and relying on them oh my god (laughs) i'm prepared to be mad yes Yes, good. Yes, stay primed. <laughs> <laughs> but essential oils are used in perfumes, cosmetics, soaps, air fresheners, food, and drink flavoring. And um, they add scents to incense and household cleaning products. Jars of essential oils have been found in ancient Egyptian tombs, yeah. including that of tu- Tutankhamun. Tutan. I was going to say Tutankhamun, which is how you're supposed to say it, but I didn't want to sound know. douchey. <laughs> yeah, you would have sounded too. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> King Tut. <laughs> King Tut. King Tut. Also, the story of the baby Jesus gets mm-hmm. frankincense myrrh, delivered yeah. to him. Yeah. Um, which is an essential oil. And foreshadowing, that is frankincense oil is used a lot by essential oil companies, kind of like blurring the lines between using essential oils and religion. My eyes just rolled Garrett in the back just of my head. Hold a muscle rolling her yeah, eyes. Sure did. <laughs> yeah, but like Vicks Vapor Rub includes Ugh, eucalyptus, greatest. cedar leaf, and nutmeg oils that are suspended in petroleum jelly. Yeah. So like we all have had encountered essential oils at some point in our life. Oh, totally. I, if it's lavender scented, I've probably purchased it. Ex- yeah. the, my body wash that I use this or morning peppermint? is lavender scented. Ooh. Yeah, and there's like certain things that are. We'll get into it. So <clears throat> they're also used in aromatherapy, mm-hmm. which is a form of alternative medicine that uses essential oils for therapeutic benefit. I have here, I personally enjoy lavender and rose scented candles and lotions. If I get a massage, I'll request that the lavender essential oil in the, is in the room dif, room's diffuser or in the lotion or oil that they use on me during the or massage. Or peppermint or like eucalyptus. Oh, I love eucalyptus. Hit me with it. Um, I also use tea tree oil dabbed mm-hmm. onto a cotton swab for breakouts. Oh, me too. Um, it's the best for that. Yeah. Yeah. And it does have antibacterial properties mm-hmm. to it, which is why it's used for that. Yep. Um, to be used topically. <laughs> Yes. Um, According to Johns Hopkins Medical Center, aromatherapy has been used for centuries. When inhaled, the scent molecules in the essential oils travel from the olfactory nerves in your nose directly into the brain and especially impact our old friend, the amygdala, the emotional center of the brain. Johns Hopkins also noted that the use of essential oils as natural remedies for a number of ailments is common, but there is not enough research to confidently state the efficacy of those treatments in humans. They also they did note that there are, have been lab studies that have shown certain essential oils can kill actually a type of Lyme bacteria better than antibiotics. Oh, no shit. But human trials are mixed. 
So, like, we're not quite there yet on it, mm-hmm. which is why science takes so long. Like, what works in a Petri dish doesn't work or on in a mouse. body. Right. right. Like, which is why dumb fuck Trump saying put some bleach in your blood or whatever to I cure COVID. Would. I wish you would. Like, yeah, it'll kill COVID in a Petri dish, but don't put it in your fucking body, you goddamn piece of shit. Anyway. Yeah. Fry yourself with a light. Yeah. Anyway, he got indicted yesterday by the time when we're recording this, so... He hasn't appeared in court yet, mm, but um, I'm super pumped for the unsealing of that indictment. I can't wait. <laughs> Chef's kiss. I do love that he said he would not accept a plea deal, and I thought it was very bold to assume a plea would be off. Yeah. <laughs> That's cute that you think I was that. like, super presumptuous, but okay, bud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're going to go through all this and then issue a plea also, deal on the first day. It must have been, dick. yeah, right, years <laughs> of this. I feel like I also read something where he said indic- indicament. Um, yes, he said, uh, they, uh, indicated. Yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was. I actually have a screenshot of that. (laughs) Great. (laughs) They, they indicated, blah, blah, blah. (laughs) Mark Hamill, like, quoted it and was like, it's almost as if the jury indicated you're guilty of something. You know, I will say his best flub ever was when he said he visited with the Prince of Wales, but he used (laughs) W-H-A-L-E. I truly That was, like, right after... After Kofefi, too, right? Yes. It was just like I scrapped when I read that. <laughs> it was so perfect. Somebody took the the whale's flag, but instead of the dragon in the middle, they put a red whale, and it was just chef's kiss. It was just and We beautiful. love whales on this podcast. We do. We love whales. Ooh. Anyway. <laughs> I wish you could see the face that she does with that whale noise. It's great. It's the same face that Dory makes. Oh, yeah. Finding Nemo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good point. <laughs> Um, But also allergic reactions to essential oils are super common and most often seen when using oregano oil, cinnamon bark oil, jasmine oil, lemongrass oil, lang lang oil. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. (laughs) And I think orange oil, I feel like, too. Um, I have chamomile oil and bergamot oil, but like really any of them Mm -hmm. can cause an allergic reaction. But most of the citrus-based ones, you can have photosensitivity. And also like... I read somebody had put, um, like, orange oil in a bath and then wound up with, like, horrific burns all over their body because it made – it basically makes your skin way more sensitive to temperature. Well, and especially, again, like, you might have an allergic response to something just the way some people are allergic to peanuts, like, but you – because you're encountering it in such, such a, a high, concentrated yes, dose. Right. And we'll get into it. Whoop, we'll get into it. But the um, depending on where you get the oil from, like, it could be yep. already diluted. But so, like, you using a drop of one oil and then changing to a different brand, it doesn't mean that that's the same dosage that you're used to. Yep. And um, because they're hydrophobic – mixing them in with water doesn't really do anything yeah so um those recommendations where they'll say like oh just put it into your morning coffee well just fyi your coffee is just hot bean water so it's not going to actually mix in with that and incorporate it's going to sit on the top and you're going to sip your coffee and get a mouthful of right that first sip is undiluted so it's not necessarily the best thing that's wild but anyway um so it's because of those reactions that you can have, that's why diluting the pure essential oil in a carrier oil is the best way to avoid a reaction when applying directly to your skin. Um, which is why when you get a massage, they only put one or two drops into that whole bottle of lotion. Right. Um, <clears throat> and essentially, if you put an undiluted essential oil onto your skin or on like onto your regular skin or onto a mucous membrane, like what's in your mouth... Oof. You can give yourself a chemical burn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Essential oils have also been used as a natural pesticide and better and considered better to use for indoor crop production or urban farming for pest control as safer than regular bug spray and is also used as like a mosquito repellent. Um, But and some places in the EU authorize the use of essential oils in farming. Um, yeah, we definitely use it for mosquitoes and mice. We use peppermint mm-hmm. oil for my mi- or uh, balsam oil. Balsam oil, maybe. Maybe I don't, I don't remember. 
Um, it's stinky, whatever it is. <laughs> there's currently no evidence-backed research showing any illness can be cured through the use of essential oils or aromatherapy. The studies on the efficacy of essential oils as mood elevators or stress relievers are more mixed, but still inconclusive. Yeah. Because it's it's all anecdotal, and yeah. you can't really do a double-blind study because it's scent-based. Right. So you can't, like, have the study of, like, here, you here's your... Not lavender right. oil. <laughs> and it's your totally lavender subjective. oil. How do you like, feel? Some people just don't like certain smells. Right. Like, totally. I used to be f- fine with lots of stuff, and now I'm at the point where I'm like one of those smell sensitivity peoples. People? People? Are you having a stroke? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Somebody get me some aromatherapy. <laughs> Um, just put this under your tongue. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Just a couple drops of this. So yeah, it definitely like, I wouldn't be able to stand. One study actually showed that, um, prepubescent boys who were exposed to lavender and tea tree oils over long periods of time, they developed breast tissue in prepubescent boys. No shit. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Um, so this is where I kind of went off the rails. <laughs> Can't wait. Because you can't really talk about essential oils without talking about MLMs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was interpreting that as a word, MLM, and I was like, what's an (laughs) MLM? MLMs, multi-level marketing companies, a.k.a. direct marketing companies, network marketing companies, or locally, yeah, a pyramid scheme. Now, technically, in the U.S., a pyramid scheme is illegal, but they get around it, especially in Utah, where a lot of these are based, mm. by selling a quote-unquote product. So if you have a product to sell, then you can't be found to be an a illegal pyramid scheme, whatever. There's plenty of other podcasts that discuss the intricacies of MLMs and, like, why they're all scams. And, um, like, if you currently are an independent distributor... Ron. With- a, a wellness advocate, whatever yeah. they call you, in these groups, and you find joy in it, good for you. Or a business owner when they're just however scheming. Yeah, the the reality is like really consider like sit down with an Excel sheet and consider what you're spending versus what you're actually making. Um, I know, and I listen to a ton of podcasts on the couple of the companies that we're going to talk about, but then MLMs in general. And um, the for one of these companies, uh, Young Living, you have to spend $100 a month of your own money to stay active enough to actually earn a commission from anything else you sell. So you're making me pay a subscription so fee in a order year. to get a commission? Yes. Suck something. Yeah. Which, you know makes it a pyramid scheme, but because they're selling products, right. Utah law says that they're not a pyramid scheme. The only one I think I'm familiar with is Scentsy. Mm-hmm. It's the only one like I have remembered seeing for like essential oils. Um, or, like They do like things. candles. Oh, there... okay. Okay. Yeah. Candles and like air mm. freshener stuff. And oh, they have, okay. it's not even candles. It's those like light wax warmers. Oh, warmers. Yeah. yeah. Cause then they're safe for your kids i guess to be around i don't know hot wax is still hot wax Uh, yeah i don't whatever um in any event so the heavy hitters like i said um you probably know somebody who sells them i know of at least one person i follow on instagram who i like personally know like i've met this person in real life um who sells young living Mm -hmm. and like does it on the side it's not her primary job or anything but um, there's doTERRA and Young Living are the big heavy hitters. And um, the primary way they sell their product is by having these local distributors sign up to be independent contractors. And they earn a commission based on how many products they sell. But they earn more of a commission <laughs> if they recruit people to sell right. and be their downline. Uh. So according to one deep dive video I watched, in order to earn just $68,000 a year, which is what the Census Bureau says is the median livable wage in the U.S., you would need to be a platinum-level distributor for Young Living. Like, less than 5% of any of their distributors make any money 
a year, like $1,000 or less considered. A year? A year. 95% of their distributors break even or lose money. 90%? Is that what 95. you just said? <laughs> Blue screen? Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, it's bad. So, wait, another question. Sh- remember um, Shannon Watts, the one who got murdered yes, by her husband? that was an MLM. Kids? Yeah, wasn't she involved in like It Works or something? Um, it's called Thrive. It's through um, – I, I listened to another podcast that talked about it. But apparently – They were um, both involved in it, weren't they? Well, he was taking the, the supplements. Gotcha. I don't think he was considered a distributor. Was that the, the patches, like the nicotine patches almost that you wear, but they're like – nutritional well right they weren't nicotine it was caffeine right but they but it, that's how you wear it yes it's like a and patch. um yeah I, I listened to it was the illuminati podcast yeah um she has a whole series called mlm mondays and so i listened to like a whole bunch of those and they're also on youtube and she spells it funny it's like two eyes like for, before illuminati and then naughty is spelled like you're naughty um in any event she did uh, plenty of deep dives, but she mentioned that, I guess, Chris Watts' girlfriend mm-hmm. at the time, other Nicole, I guess, mm-hmm. I think is her name, um, she was telling somebody at some point that she thought he snapped based on use of those patches, like it, because he was using, he lost like 80 pounds, mm-hmm. and then was like, she said it's, it seemed like he was on speed. Like, he was so hyped 100% of the time. And, like, even the Illuminati was like, there's no evidence that this, like, right. I mean, like, yeah, he, he, he could have been high strung because of too much caffeine, but that's not going to make you kill your whole family. Right. And shove them into an oil bin. So crazy. Um, yeah. So crazy story. Yeah, fuck that guy. 100%. Oh, God, what a piece of shit. But, um, yeah, they, she was, um, and she was pretty high up in the MLM. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause um, I remember she had, they had gone to like, like gone on trips yes. for that yeah. company or something. But yeah. So to, and I don't, I mean, again, if you're, if you want to go into the MLM side of things there, there's the anti MLM podcast, yep. um, that interviews people who are in different MLMs. And if you want to see it in real time, Facebook is a great <laughs> A great opportunity because the there's Illuminati definitely... calls them MLM Huns because they always start yeah. like, "Hey, hun, how's it going?" Yeah, and there's like it guaranteed everybody has at least five people they went to high school with that got involved in one for sure. I've gotten messages from the little sister of a kid I graduated with, a graduated high school with, for Beachbody, and she yeah. posts about her like their Saturday motivation meetups on no, Zoom thank you. and no, thank you, I whatever, no, thank you um advocare i had people try and pull me into advocate well i feel like we can do deep dives on those for after our diet episodes yeah um okay so like i said young living is the brand that i'm familiar with i have heard of doTERRA but i think i've just heard it in like passing kind of like i've seen it and like yeah i got off facebook before i feel like the essential oil mlms like took off guaranteed people i went to high school with were sure yeah doing it and i've i've participated in mlms before like i tried to sell um party light candles and somebody tried to get me involved in that and i wound up not doing it but i went to a few of the parties i did um jamberry for a while those like nail stickers oh yeah yeah. um also a utah-based company that i'm pretty sure like went bankrupt or there was like a whole drama situation not quite as bad as lularoe but (laughs) <laughs> rough and um but yeah so like i get it like it happens you're not a bad person if you've no. been involved with an mlm before no, they That's target people saying. specifically yeah yes and um so anyway but young living is the brand that i'm familiar with and you probably have seen it in the form of thieves cleaner if you've seen anybody on social media talk about thieves cleaner i can have this around my kids this is a great cleaner do they come to your house like and do just like a like a party light party where they come yeah. and um yeah okay yeah I think I do have a familiarity with that yes yeah yeah so that's I think that's most of the that's an essential oil cleaner mm-hmm. um so but here's the the rabbit hole 
So Young Living was founded by D. Gary Young, Donald Gary Young. He went by Gary. I thought you said Don, not Donald. That would have been funnier. <laughs> Dong. Can we call him Dong? No. Oh. He's a, you know, he doesn't get <laughs> to be proud of his wiener. Um, so it was founded in 1994. I'm just going to call him Gary or Gary Young. He was born in 1948. He died in 2018 at the age of 68. Uh, the Young Living website reports his life story as starting in a one-room cabin in the mountains of Idaho and having a, quote, passion for discovery and wellness that brought him to distant corners of the world, from the lavender fields in southern France to desert ruins in Yemen to rainforests in Ecuador, unquote. Are we trying to make it sound like this man invented essential oils? Yes. The website goes on to state that Gary began studying in 1985 with, quote, prominent aromatherapists, perfumiers, and historians, unquote, which is like soups cute. Um, but there's like, <laughs> like wild key details missing from this summary of his life. So he graduated high school in 1967 and worked for the U.S. Forest Service briefly before moving to British Columbia, Canada with the intention of homesteading. However, he reports that he was injured in a severe logging accident when he was 24, which is 1973. So like six years after he graduated high school. According to Gary, he was in a wheelchair for 27 months after this accident and started to experiment with essential oils, which he says caused him to start feeling movement in his toes and eventually progressed to him being able to walk again. Sir. All I could picture when I was reading this story was that movie where Steve Martin pretending to be paralyzed and they, like, stab him in the leg. <laughs> My brain went immediately to when Michael cooked his foot in the office, personally, <laughs> and he wanted Pam to rub butter on it. I cannot believe this man, this dusty man, tried to say that aromatherapy cured him of a severe spinal injury. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It gets better. Don't yeah, worry. I know. I know. I'm sorry. So in his biography, Mary Young, his wife, who his it was his third wife. She was married to him at the time of his death, wrote that his logging accident resulted in three open skull fractures, a ruptured spinal cord, nearly a dozen ruptured spinal discs, 16 broken or crushed vertebrae, a broken pelvis, 19 broken bones total. And Gary was told he would never walk again. Gary also re um. Purportedly, goes, you think I'm not going to be able to walk? I'm going to invent essential oils. Well, he apparently tried to end his own life during this period. The final time essentially going on a hunger strike, more or less, where he drank a combination of water with lemon juice for 253 days straight. And it was after this bizarre fast that he began to feel his toes move again. Um, and according to Mary... This improvement is what made him distrust the medical establishment. But... Yeah, did the medical establishment also perform, like, a million surgeries to put you back together like Humpty Dumpty? Nope. It's worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to tell you the story. <laughs> so mad already. According to Business Insider, who did this huge investigation, I, had to, I like, bought a subscription so I could get all the information <laughs> on this. Yes. The commitment. <laughs> He was in a wheelchair for four months, that's it, after his logging accident, um, completed a home study course in nutrition and herbology, which is like Harry Potter. Yeah, uh, <laughs> immediately what I thought of, personally. <laughs> Before going back to work part-time as a trucker in British Columbia, <laughs> while also working other odd jobs. So, like, he worked when he was allegedly paralyzed for 27 months trying to end his own life. Um, Doing his fucking water fast. Yeah, so he did different jobs like um, hauling cargo and working on an oil pipeline in Alaska. In 1979, so like six years after this alleged accident, um, he enrolled in the Burroughs Vita Flex Institute, an unaccredited school dedicated to the teachings of Stanley Burroughs, <laughs> who was labeled, <laughs> that like school Trump was University. labeled, yeah, it was labeled a, a diploma mill. Um, Stanley Burroughs, side note, was convicted of second degree murder and a felony charge of practicing medicine without a license after a leukemia patient died from his treatment in 1981. The murder conviction was ultimately overturned on appeal, but the practicing medicine without a license was affirmed. Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
So that's that's who he started school with. That's that like uh, if anybody listened to that Doctor Death podcast, that guy who like faked all his credentials and was like performing spinal surgery on people and just maiming everybody. Or like Gary Young. Yeah. <laughs> Kaz was here fixing himself. He also attended Donsbach U- Nutrition University from 1979 to 1981 and claims he earned a doctorate in naturopathy between 1982 and 1985 from Bernadine University. Both of those universities are unaccredited. And remember, according to his wife, he started educating, he started schooling on this in 1985. So, like, none of this is part of his reported education, which is bizarre. But anyway, uh, while he was doing all of this totally legit education bullshit, in the early 1980s, Gary and his first wife, Donna, moved to from Canada to Spokane, Washington, where they opened an herb shop and a nutrition center. And while there, Gary spent a quarter semester at Spokane Community College taking pre-med courses and studying at the American Institute of Physio-Regenerology. Wait a minute. Why does a quarter of a semester count for fucking shit? It doesn't. It's it's not like he graduated. It's just like that's how long he went to classes. Um, So he was studying at the American Institute of Physio-Regenerology, which is a massage therapy school. However, according to the massage therapy school's founder, Gary dropped out after attending just a few classes, doing one third of the homework and owing tuition. (laughs) But in that time, in the early 80s, when in Spokane, uh, trigger warning, by the way, for infant death, Gary had this belief that if a child was born underwater, it would be uh, immunized against various illnesses, like naturally. What? I don't know if he learned that from the unaccredited school or the quarter (laughs) semester at community college. (laughs) I don't know where he got this bad information, but he really went with it. (laughs) But Gary and Donna had six children together, four of which he delivered via underwater birth. Hell to the no. Their seventh child, a girl, was delivered in a whirlpool bathtub at his own health club, which I believe is that herb shop and nutrition center can you imagine like you pay for like some kind of like aromatherapy session and it's in this like t- fucking tub i just imagine like cleaned. going into like gnc or the vitamin shop and there's a fucking hot tub in the middle yeah <laughs> like, some lady birthing. laboring yeah <laughs> jesus christ however because he had this underwater immunization belief the little girl who would be named rachel died in the birthing tub because she was kept underwater for almost an hour before being removed allegedly it's all alleged what the fuck the coroner found that she probably would have lived if she had been delivered in a hospital or in a conventional delivery method where you don't drown your own baby yeah with just like air if it was just air in this scenario she probably would have been fine however the coroner did ultimately rule the death was the result of cardiac arrest and gary was not charged with her death that's fucking irresponsible Well, so this is random, and I was thinking on it on my drive over, and I'm pretty sure the reason I know this is because it was mentioned in, like, a Dateline episode in the early 2000s, but when a baby is born, they have this, like, flap in their throat. Right. So that they don't, like, inhale amniotic fluid. Right. And short, like, they have it for a little while. They're in this, like, weird in-between where they're not, like, breathing, breathing, but they're also not not breathing. They're, like, practicing breathing, whatever. Yeah. But as they grow, which is why post-term babies are at risk for inhaling meconium, Mm -hmm. um, that flap starts to disappear. Mm -hmm. So, but this flap, like it'll, it'll eventually disappear, but that's why when very small children or like in SIDS, they'll say like the cause of death is cardiac arrest or suffocation. They don't say drowning yeah, because the baby can't drown. There, there isn't fluid in the lungs. Yeah. So they're not drowning clinically speaking even if they might be held underwater so this motherfucker found a loophole basically a medical loophole from his five minutes in school in a real school allegedly allegedly didn't get charged with fucking murdering his own kid it's just wild i mean like the rationale behind it like okay if you think that water births are better fine yeah don't keep like we're not fish at no point (laughs) in a water birth scenario they're like and now we leave the baby here. I've only like soup. I've seen a water it's literally baby soup that they're making. I've seen a water birth where they've like kept the baby in the water with its head above mm-hmm. water, 
so that it's like a trans smoother transition. Yes. Yeah. But the you still let it have air because yes. we don't have gills. Like, no. what the fuck? Nope. Can Just, you imagine your spouse looking you in the face and being like, I want to deliver these children myself? Get the fuck out of here. It's wild. But Get then the again, like, here. yeah. So he wasn't charged with Rachel's death, but it did cause the Spokane Police Department to do an investigation into his health club because, like, stop delivering babies at a health club. Yes. Um, so they sent two officers undercover as a pregnant couple um seeking medical advice and gary offered them prenatal services and told them he could treat cancer sir i have no idea why you would mention cancer in a prenatal consult did they mention that for you when you met with your no, OB? oddly enough there was no mention of cancer huh that's weird just stop eating so much mostly. <laughs> <laughs> ask them what their cancer treatments are you can also treat me for cancer right <laughs> just in the off chance <laughs> Jesus. That's how you get fired by your doctor. <laughs> I'm looking for the Gary treatment plan. Where you <laughs> well, that investigation. Put me in a whirlpool bath with some drops of essential oil <laughs> under my tongue. So that investigation, though, resulted in him being charged with practicing medicine without a license, which he pleaded guilty to and was sentenced one year probation and told, like, don't do that again in Washington or any of the other states, Mr. Guy. You naughty boy. And, and then they just left it at $250 fine. Yeah. Two hundred and fifty dollars, mm-hmm. which again, like it's practicing medicine without a license. So, like on the one hand, I wonder if they were just like, "Well, if you go to this guy seeking medical care, like, aren't you kind of an idiot?" Right. Like, he's offering you like vitamin D, like, but not that vitamin D. You well, no, that's what I was saying. Is he probably was? It's probably. Well, there's. I didn't see anything like that. So, um, I just can't. Oh. But almost immediately, while still on probation, Gary moved to San Diego, California, and opened a health company that sold vitamins, extracts, mouthwash, colonics, and a book written by that Burroughs guy who, you know, has that felony conviction. And, uh, oh, that's right. Somebody. That was a different guy that did the same shit. That's the one who gave him his doctorate from the diploma mill. Um, so I wrote birds of a feather, I guess. <laughs> yeah. He literally, like, made him a diploma in MS paint and printed it for him. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, crazy. And around 1986, after the probation ended, Gary opened a clinic in Tijuana, Mexico, offering, quote, detoxic, mm, offering, <laughs> quote, detoxification, defoxification, <laughs> unquote, for cancer in lupus using treatments that he invented. Jesus. According to the clinic's brochure, he went to Mexico to, quote, escape harassment from the orthodox medical profession, unquote. <laughs> You know, the harassment where they're like, stop killing these people, You're please. like, hey, can you do us a favor and just, like, not deliver babies in a whirlpool tub, buddy? In, yeah. In the back of your GNC? <laughs> um, an investigative report from the LA Times, written by John Hurst and published in 1987, detailed how Gary treated patients while doing business in Mexico. Basically, a would-be patient will call them up or whatever and say, like, yeah, send me your shit. Like, I want to be a patient. So Gary sends them a kit with sharp pins and two glass specimen slides like we had in science class, you know? Yeah. The patient is supposed to puncture their pinky finger on each hand and put five dots of blood from the right hand on one side and five dots of blood from the left hand on the other side. What? Like it's going to be different blood? I'm sorry. He's a doctor. Sorry. I'm sorry. That's right. (laughs) God. And then you send it back to Gary with a $60 payment to be diagnosed. The L.A. Times reporter doing this investigation requested the kit and used blood from a healthy seven-year-old cat because he had a friend who was a vet. (laughs) And the investigator presented the slides stating that they were his own blood and that he was a prospective patient. A, quote, health educator at the clinic looked at the slides under a microscope. Like, so he went down to the clinic, I guess, and hand-delivered it. So he looked at, this educator looked at the slides under a microscope that would project the image onto, like, a nearby TV screen and diagnosed the patient slash reporter with, quote, an aggressive cancer and liver problems, unquote. The health educator... It's weird. You have feline leukemia. I don't know how... (laughs) Have you been tested for feline AIDS? Oh, my God. (laughs) You have distemper. How did that... (laughs) 
No, those would all be like real diagnoses that they would give people so they wouldn't use that. <laughs> well, animals, not people. But don't worry because this health educator also provided horoscopes to patients in the waiting room for $50 each. You should start charging $50 each for yours. <laughs> right? I know. You can get them on our Patreon for yeah, two you're, bucks. Yeah, you're just as equipped. <laughs> Basically. Yeah. Um, Time to start prescribing things. I literally said, side note, you can get just as legit a horoscope from us every month for $2 by joining our Patreon. Yeah. But maybe we'll make you giggle. I think so. They came out this morning. I laughed. Yeah. Um, additionally, by looking at those blood samples, the health educator was able to tell the reporter slash patient that the cancer had been in his system for four to five years, despite being super aggressive, I guess. And the reporter then at that point requested another blood crystallization test, which is what they called it, be done that day. And this time he used his own blood specimen. And this time the educator only found signs of latent cancer, not <laughs> not aggressive cancer. Because <laughs> latent. But also said that the liver dysfunction was still present and now joined by pancreas and thyroid problems. Can I tell you that, uh, what was it, ro- blood crystallization? Yeah. That makes me think of rock candy. I was like, maybe that's what I thought of too. Rock candy out of blood. Yeah. That's what happens when they put it in that spinner thing, right? That's yeah, why they they're doing rock it. Rock candy. Yeah. I thought so. And then they sell it. <laughs> <laughs> so, based on both tests, the health educator recommended the reporter patient engage in a, quote, supervised program of cleansing, detox, and rebuilding, unquote. That program. You want to guess how much it cost in 1986 dollars? Seven hundred and fifty dollars. No, two thousand dollars a week. <gasps> oh, when done at the clinic, because of room and board, of course. But you could do it at home for just four hundred and ninety dollars a week, which would consist of four hundred dollars of vitamins and supplements sold through Gary's San Diego store. So he would, like, tell these patients down in fucking Mexico, okay, just go to my store up in San Diego, get those supplements, and then take them. $400 after charging them $60 for this bullshit horoscope blood reading. So the reporter, I mean, this guy, like, really did it. Like, he did the damn thing. Um, He sent a second set of slides under the auspices of a new patient request, but this time used chicken blood. (laughs) And apparently the... The reason he did this is because the shape of chicken blood cells is extremely obvious mm-hmm. in a, in its difference from human and especially mammal blood right. cells. Right, so like if you're really looking at it, you would know something was... Right. I guess chickens have oval-shaped blood cells. Oh, interesting. Yeah, and ours are, if you've seen any imagery in a biology textbook, they're just round circle. They're little Cheerios. They do look like little Cheerios. <laughs> little Nilla wafers floating around in there. <laughs> Cheerios. <laughs> We're going to end up getting sponsored by Cheerios. <laughs> General I <love> Mills. <laughs> I love Honey Nut Cheerios. I want some right now. <laughs> um, but despite the difference in uh, chicken blood versus human blood, mm-hmm. the chicken was, patient was diagnosed with liver inflammation and pre-lymphomic liver inflammation, inflammation and a pre-lymphomic condition. Uh, and was told, quote, it appears as though you've recently undergone a high level of upset in your life, which has weakened your immune response considerably. The prescription for this chicken was the same detox course that was prescribed earlier. It kind of reminds me of like when you would do those, uh, like you get a banner ad that's like, are you anemic? And you do the quiz and it's like, your humors are out of You're whack. You're gonna die. <laughs> yeah. You might have liver problems. That's what that sounds like. Yeah. It's like the nonsense. That like meme of the old timey drug that was like, oh, I guess your blood's haunted. You better do cocaine about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, it, uh, At least cocaine would do something for you. That's true. Um. So this reporter also noted that a 21 day treatment program for to treat cancer from this clinic would have cost $6,500 in 1987. That's over $17,500 in today's money, which like would not be covered by your health insurance, obviously. Yeah, Cause there's no uh, actual medical care being given. Can you imagine submitting that bill to your insurance company? <laughs> no, no, no. You, you don't understand my blood. My blood has ghosts. I had to, I feel like <laughs> I, had to, haunted. I had to fight to get them to cover a legitimate genetic test. So I cannot, <laughs> Cannot imagine being like, 
Listen, they made <laughs> rock candy out of my blood and read me my horoscope, and they told me that my humors are out of whack. Like when Andy Dwyer's like, they microwaved my ankles. <laughs> yes. Or on um, The Office when also Andy was like, how am I going to pay the motor oil bill in my apartment? Like just <laughs> nonsense. Yes. How will I pay the mortgage on my car? Um, patients of this clinic reported that Gary would walk around dressed like a doctor with a stethoscope around his neck and had his employees referring to him as Dr. Young. Oh, keep me away from him because I would then start listening to what he was saying because I get bullied by doctors. Well, and that's the thing. Like, yeah. it's, you tell me, you're, like, why would I question that? Yeah. Like, the same thing, like, if I tell somebody I'm a lawyer, like, if your first question, is, your first response is, like, fucking prove it. The like, only well, the only thing that would anymore. get me is if it was like Better Call Saul, where he's like working out of like a nail salon. Then that might be concerning, but otherwise, I would probably listen. I'm terrible. Yeah. Um, the health educator, by the way, later defended her analysis of the chicken blood in a telephone interview, saying, "I've never seen chicken blood before, so I wouldn't know." <laughs> If that had been human blood, that would have been an accurate analysis of the blood. This is not right. a test. <laughs> but it's not. So. She continues, this is not a test where we see things in any way that a conventional blood test sees them, she continued. I analyzed it in good faith. As warm-blooded animals, apparently we have things in common. As for Boomer, the name of the cat that they tested... <laughs> Uh, the health educator insisted it was not a healthy cat. That cat probably has leukemia. If the cat is acting healthy, the cat could be a carrier of leukemia. The assistant to the veterinarian that was caring for the cat said that Boomer was tested for leukemia after the clinic's diagnosis and was found to be neither afflicted with nor carrying the disease. <laughs> so the cat's fine. Well, probably not anymore, but it was fine in 1987. Well, I'm going to say definitely not anymore, but... Um... <laughs> You know, I guess maybe he could Probably be. not a 42-year-old cat. Yeah. But. Yeah. <laughs> Stranger things have happened? Yeah. I mean, if he tried the supplement regimen, who knows? Uh, if they just did the rock candy, <laughs> that would have fixed it. <laughs> what was that? Did you ever watch, like, Big Rock Candy Mountain? Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um. <laughs> so, this... <laughs> this was a bunch of bullshit, thanks to this mm -hmm. investigative report. Um, Gary was again charged with crimes, this time by the San Diego Attorney General, which saw a preliminary injunction against him for engaging in unfair, deceptive, untrue, and misleading advertising and unlawful, unfair, and fraudulent business practices because he sold unapproved medical devices and drugs. And what I think was the critical point is that he advertised that his clinic could cure everything from cancer to multiple sclerosis to arthritis. That case ultimately settled in 1989, so, like, he didn't go to jail or anything. Um, Again, bullying probably could have solved this, nipped it right in the bud. Yeah. Um, according to Mary, Gary's most recent wife and biographer, oh my Gary... God, Mary and Gary? I know. <laughs> Jesus. And then it also makes me think of Gary the jellyfish from Spongebob or the snail yeah. pet or whatever. Yeah. Um, Gary was first introduced to essential oils by a Swiss lady who brought her sister to his Tijuana clinic in 1983, uh, which, again, doesn't match with his 1986 move to San Diego, but whatever. Um, but I guess this Swiss lady just, like, foisted an envelope of research translated from French about essential oils on Gary, and that made him stay up all night reading the entire thing, and the next day he just needed to know more. Uh, which, according to Mary, is when his essential oil quest really started. <laughs> which, like I, I have written here, if you're paying attention, this Mary's timeline of events completely contradicts his experimentation with essential oils a decade prior in 1973 when he was crushed in this logging accident. And then his, like, nat naturopathic, like, home correspondence courses that he was taking through the 70s and early 80s, whatever, whatever. In any event, the point is that Gary was, like, increasingly fighting against Western and modern medicine and was apparently prone to, quote, paranoid rants against doctors, hospitals, and pharmaceutical companies, unquote. He would have loved QAnon. Yeah, honestly. Um, I'm sure he was probably into it because he died in 2018, so, like... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe he's Q. I'm kidding. 
sorry, go ahead. Business Insider obtained a transcript from the court records, which included a transcript of a rant when he was <laughs> described disease as a tool used by doctors and nurses to manipulate patients into being dependent on them. Which is like a hot take that we didn't consider in our medical bias episodes. We didn't. Um, <laughs> tell me, Gary, what is it that you're doing? Seriously. Because that's ironic. He also said that people who lack the will to live subconsciously choose to get sick, which is cool because then he's just saying that like, cancer is a choice. Yeah. Um, and also wildly convenient to have this stance because then anytime any one of your patients dies, it's their own fault because they wanted to not live. Like, which you see a lot with any of these supplement things like Thrive or Herbalife. It, if it doesn't work, it's because you didn't do it right. Right. Just like a diet. Yes. Same, same concept. So, um, but uh, regardless, he did have this like crazy mistrust of modern medicine and particularly Western medicine and medicine as regulated by the United States federal government. Um, and that's really what helped Young Living and the entire essential oil industry take off into what we know it to be today. Which, again, like, in the 60s and 70s, people were still using lavender-scented stuff and rose-scented stuff. Like, we've known about essential oils this whole time. But Just ask King Toot. <laughs> we're going to have to go on, like, a cultural field trip to the Met. <laughs> It's worth mentioning that my, um, I, I messaged Katie last night because my entire Instagram feed right now is <laughs> farting memes, cats, and was, oh, and babies. Mm -hmm. That's everything. Yeah. Just, I get every farting, everything. <laughs> so you say King Toot and it just makes me giggle. <laughs> um, so I was listening, so Insider, Business Insider has a podcast that was like a limited run, but it's called Brought to You By, and they had um, an episode about Young Living and the essential oh. oil thing. It was very good. Um, I think I have it linked in the show notes. Um, but they had this recording of Gary that they played where he was giving a speech to a bunch of like Young Living people, like distributors or whatever, and was lamenting the government regulating everything and preventing him from saying his essential oils cure anything and prevented him from calling himself a doctor since he didn't have any actual education credentials to speak of beyond what he could buy from basically a vending machine. Um, Just, but God. notable, Gary was a lifelong Mormon, and he, in this speech basically said the government can't regulate religion and young living can teach people to have a religious experience with the essential oils they sell. Did you watch, um, under the banner of heaven? No. On, uh, FX? No. It was, uh, Andrew Garfield played, they were Mormons and, um, the dad of this one, they were, they were like a very prolific family and there was a murder committed of like one of the, um, daughter-in-laws and married to, like, one of the sons. It was very interesting. Hmm. It was good. Is it on Hulu? But there was, um, yes, it's on Hulu. And one of the sons becomes, like, super anti-government, anti-taxation, like, because oh, there's like definitely, like, citizen yeah, citizen. and there's definitely, like, a sect of Mormonism that is extremely, like, anti-establishment because of their persecution that they yes. faced. Um, so... It kind of like tied into that where it was like this real, this streak of like real, like extremism to yeah. the point where you're like a uh, domestic terrorist. Yes. Because you're so committed to this, I guess, oppression that you're facing as a, yeah. um, you know, uh, upper middle class white male. Well, and apparently. Who um, with multiple wives and fucking. Mormonism in general, like mm. the latter, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, one of their primary tenets is that you have to be prepared for the end of the world mm -hmm. for Armageddon. So one of the things that they teach is having this huge stockpile of um, food and mm -hmm. like home essentials um, at all times. Yeah. And um, part of that is the idea that the government won't be able to get you anything when that happens and it's so just an ADHD tip. A, a level of self-sufficiency, which lends itself to these more homeopathic yes. remedies. So I think that's also part of why Young Living and doTERRA 
are founded and run by yes. these people who are Mormon and believe that like, oh, you're, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You got to do it and you're fighting for it and you're. And you know, how they can like get a footing. Yes. In Utah because yeah. you've got this, it's like primed for that. Yes. So it's definitely like I I guess it just was like not anything I ever really made the connection to until I watched that and I was like, "Oh." Yeah. Cuz they showed like they also included like historical context to it and why they felt that way about the government. Yeah. Um and it was it was wild. It was really crazy. I have to adjust. Yeah, I've uh, I tried to pick myself up but been... the railing was like Did you try back. and pick yourself up by your bootstraps? <laughs> yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if I spill my water on myself again this episode. <laughs> well, we'll see. I'm going to put a hole in your wall, evidently. Pinocchio. <laughs> At it again. Um, so, yeah. So, he was saying that, basically, like, the government can't regulate religion. And his corporate board, because they kept getting, like, these warnings, either from um, the FDA or the FTC or local Utah government, like... Um, the medical board, stop saying you're a doctor. Exactly. So his, his corporate board of Young Living actually asked Mary to get him out of the country or something. Like, go take him somewhere so that we can get this business off the ground and stop having to pay attorneys to respond to all these, like, notices that we're getting from the government. So um, he fucked off to Ecuador where Young Living had one of its farms and did the same thing he was doing in the Tijuana Clinic. He was, um, I think because he wasn't advertising in the U.S. and wasn't luring U.S. patients to Ecuador, um, he didn't get in trouble. But he was still basically testing essential oils on poor people who did not, he did not share a common language with them. So um, one patient in particular, I think this was in the um, Business Insider podcast, this story, one patient was given an IV bag of some sort of essential oil blend that an the patient IV bag. Yeah, the patient's caregiver stored in a freezer and like thought it out. Like Gary was like came over to like tell her, I guess, how to do it and thought it for some time. But I guess according to a former employee of Young Living, when the infusion into the patient began, there was still like a chunk of ice in the IV bag. So this patient eventually succumbed to their illness, which was likely cancer. Because, like, fucking obviously he did. Um, Gary basically said that his caregiver just didn't follow the instructions properly. Um, and like I said before, we see this all the time in the health and wellness round. If you aren't successful, it's your own fault. Yeah. And not the fault of the product or the person who sold them to you. You said it wrong. Right. Exactly. So, like, this guy might have died anyway. Like, realistically, right, it's, it's right. that thing of, like... But maybe we didn't need to accelerate it, and maybe he could have been more comfortable in the process. Exactly. Like, we have no information on the extent of his disease or what medications or treatments he had tried up to that point. Um, but that doesn't change the fact that Gary's response to this guy's death was to dismiss it right. and his part, part in that death at all and blamed his caregiver. Like, a fucking monster. So, you know, enter thieves' oil, basically. And that's all I have for this episode. But we're going to come back next week with more. We'll be back, um, <laughs> you know, in case you're ready for another round of Rage. We get to talk about the plague next episode. Ooh. Yeah. Which one? The Not the recent <laughs> one. The bubonic one. Ooh. Yeah. Middle Ages. Um, yeah, so tune in next week to hear more rage-inducing information. And I encourage you to not, like, go ahead and listen to those other, to the Business Insider podcast if you want to. Um, again, it's called, uh, the Business Insider podcast is called Brought to You By. Yeah. Um, but I, if you can, if you can hold out, like, don't re look into this at all because next week, I promise I'll explain more. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I did. Fresh set of eyes. Yes. Yeah. yeah I yeah. did not Google anything. Yeah. It's a it's a super compelling story, and um, it's it's just crazy. And we'll have the story from our listener and their experience with essential oil yeah, too. I'm excited. Yeah. It's you're gonna love it. Yeah. So tune <laughs> yeah. in next week. And, and in the meantime, uh, don't eat oils that are just essence of the plant that they smell like. And um. 
don't be a domestic terrorist. Also that. Because the bar is ankle high. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be here next Thursday with another episode to tangle your ear holes. In the meantime, the best way to support us is to follow us on Instagram at the bar is ankle high and to subscribe and leave us a five-star review on your preferred podcast streaming platform. It seems really simple, but it really is the best way to help us out, especially whenever you can actually write out a review. Great news. We have a new merch store that ships internationally and allows you to customize your merch on an endless array of products. You can head over to bit.ly slash ankle high merch to check it all out. If you want even more ankle high hot takes in your life and you have a few dollars to spare, you can also join our Patreon at patreon.com slash the bar is ankle high. There's three different tiers to choose from $2 toe rings, $5 anklets, and $10 limbo champions. Everybody gets monthly horoscopes written by yours truly, anklets get bi weekly dysfunction junction episodes. And Limbo Champions get all of that, plus ad-free episodes. And they get added to our close friends list on Instagram. So head on over to patreon.com slash thebarisanklehigh and join today. Until next Thursday, remember to be kind to yourself because the bar is ankle high.